This is Twit. All right, Steve, let's find out why we should disconnect the old fax printer. So I do feel like I've pretty thoroughly already stepped on the lead here uh, <laughs> because, and frankly, I've done so only in the best interest of our listeners because I will be surprised if, I don't know even if this is going to get attention because uh, because it just might be used in targeted attacks. But it's been a long time since I've seen a vulnerability that has such exploit attempt potential for 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 attack targeting we've talked often uh, we often talk about how interpreters are so difficult to secure um, it turns out that once again checkpoint research uh, as i said working overtime did some amazing reverse engineering of an of an HP combo fax printer scanner device um, the the device was not easy to get into I mean not only physically physically they destroyed it they had to like cut off the plastic back in order to access the 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 brain board inside of of the this combo device Um they found the JTAG interface, which is the 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 you know the programming interface for uh, for like uh, connecting a debugger to an, an embedded processor. They they were able to begin to uh, to see what was going on inside, but they needed to, like to get more debugging capability in. So they found a means for bootstrapping themselves using a network-based large packet, which uh, they were then able to use to attack the printer from the network. All of this just for the research. This is just the reverse engineering part. This is not the attack. This is gaining a foothold for reverse engineering and understanding what was going on. That allowed them using this 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 first the J the JTAG to then figure out how to get a buffer overflow from the network, allowed them to get some debugging capability uploaded into the printer that was otherwise locked down. Once they were in there, they were able to more conveniently look around and start to understand what their environment was. Um, uh, they found uh, an ARM 32-bit CPU, which was running in big Endian mode, meaning that the, the sequence of bytes is not least significant byte first, it's most significant byte first for multi-byte uh, values. Uh, they found that a shared memory region is used to communicate with the, uh, the microcontroller and the LCD. Uh, the operating system was ThreadX based, which is a real-time OS made by Green Hills. Uh, the, it uses a flat memory model where there are many tasks running in kernel mode, all sharing the same flat virtual address space. Um, and they, they determined that there was no ASLR mechanisms. It was all fixed position memory, which is probably reasonable for a, a turnkey device like that. Um, they um, they then proceeded to look for vulnerabilities from the phone line. I mean, this was their entire intent: was is there a way to at to uh, to attack this device? by phoning into it from the outside. Um, so they they started, they, they took a disassembly of it using their debugging tools, started reverse engineering it, figured out what was going on. The normal faxes are two-tone, black and white. Um, they contain essentially a big TIFF, T-I-F-F format image, although during the handshaking phase, the various metadata for the following TIFF image 
is exchanged. They looked there. They couldn't really see any way of, of compromising it. And the TIFF interpreter itself looked solid. Again, no obvious means of, of exploit. But they noticed in the initial handshake, there was there are many, you know, fax protocol, I think it's T.30, has been around for decades. And it has evolved. There, the this machine, as do the HP machines, also advertises that it can accept a JPEG image. It says it supports color, maybe just half tones it in order to like be accommodating. But there is a capabilities bit saying can accept a, J, a, a JPEG. Well, it turns out that in the standard, if you're sending a JPEG, then the, the metadata for the JPEG is included in the JPEG, not in the handshaking. They looked there. And they they found I mean like it was a it was a, a uh, <laughs> I'm speechless and there there were so many problems with what they found they immediately found a number of obvious buffer overruns they were able to basically pick and choose which ones they wanted for the ease of their own use and they they found one that gave them maximum flexibility and freedom where basically they worked out how they could dial up the fax machine unmodified. So, right. So, I mean, all, all of that hacking that I talked about was information gathering to reverse engineer what was there. And this is what HP has reused universally. That, that is that core across all of their uh, their combo devices. And I, I, don't, I don't know if, if I could say there are hundreds of them, but I mean, the list is endless of like over time of all the devices which are vulnerable. So um, what they designed was a quote fax unquote, which, which when the fax machine answers, they do the little handshake and agree and then they upload this JPEG image, which compromises the, in the JPEG interpreter, allows them to execute a buffer overrun. And because they wanted that, I mean, it wasn't just enough to get in the fax machine. They wanted to like demonstrate true capability. It then loads the external blue and double pulsar NSA weaponized attacks to turn around and go out into the network on which to which this device is attacked and take over all the machines there. So, so my point is that today this is all public knowledge. Their write up is a, I mean it go it it stops short of providing. A, like the binary code to do this, but it's just, and it, and it took good hacking. I mean, people needed to know how to do this, but when you consider how target rich the environment is, as I mentioned earlier, Google lists the fax numbers of uh, 300 million machines. Uh, all Japanese businesses apparently have fax numbers. 45% of Japanese households do. We don't, again, we don't know that they're HP. They may be Canon or and probably are other Japanese brands. On the other hand, we don't know that they're not equally affected. The, the, it, it was only HP that these guys attacked. They responsibly disclosed. HP said, you know, <laughs> I'm sure there are people not sleeping. It was like, OMG, uh, immediately produced across the board, like every single device has firmware updates. I updated my own machine this morning. Thus, the picture of the week is, is that picture. I tweeted it immediately, a link to the HP site. If you just go to uh, printers, uh, there's like, you know, uh, download uh, drivers and downloads. There's a firmware tab. You, you, 
tell it the device you have. It'll point you at an XE. You download it and run it. It'll find the device on your network and patch it. Uh, it's, interestingly, I wanted to know whether it would patch it if it had already been patched. And so I ran it twice. The second time took longer, but finally finished. But it didn't tell me that it had, that it had already been patched. So somebody who wants to, who's cautious may want to, you know, work through the, the devices, either their built-in uh, network monitor to get the current firmware version, or maybe it shows if you dig around in the UI, if you have an LCD screen on yours, find out what the firmware is first, then run the patch, then confirm. Um, essentially, this is a the, the first occurrence of a through the phone attack that is that turns around and attacks a state a state of the art network to which this phone connected fax printer is attached in order to do its job hp's responded it's very likely that other manufacturers are vulnerable and Anyway, so, you know, that's really the, the gist of this. They had a, a sort of a fun Q&A uh, in their coverage. And I've got the links both uh, for all of this uh, uh, in the show notes. They, they, they said, they asked themselves the question, what is this research about? Checkpoint Research has uncovered critical vulnerabilities in the fax protocol. Now, that's not true. It's HP's implementation of the fax protocol. They say these vulnerabilities allow an attacker with mere access to a phone line and a fax number to attack its victims all in one printer, in this case HP, that hasn't been, that hasn't been updated, allowing him full control over the all-in-one printer and possibly the entire network it is connected to. They say, they then ask, is, does this apply to all all-in-one printers? No. We conducted our research on all-in-one fax printers. However, similar vulnerabilities are likely to be found in other fax implementations, such as fax to mail services, standalone fax machines, etc. <laughs> then they ask, who uses fax anyway? Much as you did, Leo. Surprisingly, they answer, fax is still used by many industries, governments, and individuals around the world. These include the healthcare industry, legal, banking, and commercial, some of which are governed by regulations and others simply for legacy reasons. They ask, what is the security level of the, sorry, what is the severity level of this vulnerability? HP classified this vulnerability as critical. In fact, yes, 9.8 out of 10. Uh, so as bad as it gets. How does this affect organizations and consumers? They answer, once an all-in-one printer has been compromised, anything is possible. It could be used to infiltrate an organization's or consumer's internal network, steal printed documents, mine Bitcoin, or practically anything. They ask, does this apply to all fax machines? Our research was done on HP OfficeJet all-in-one printers, though this was merely a test case. We strongly believe that similar vulnerabilities apply to other fax vendors too, as this research concerns the fax concerns the fax communication protocols in general. Again, no, it concerns the implementation of the fax communication protocols. There's nothing in the that the fax communi communication protocol itself does that allows this to happen. It just wasn't written right. But it's difficult to write it right. Is that widespread, they ask. By our estimates, they say, there are currently hundreds of millions of fax machines still in use around the world. Financial reports from Wall Street indicate that tens of millions of all-in-one printers are sold worldwide each year. So it hasn't gone away, still very popular. Has it been fixed? We worked closely with HP to fix the vulnerability and following the process of responsible disclosure, they managed to release a patch before this publication. In fact, if your device is already configured to auto update, as Joel's was, I mentioned before, then the patch has likely already been applied, as he found. 
This patch, however, only applies to HP all-in-one printers, and the vulnerability may well still apply to devices from other manufacturers as well. So just again, uh, props to HP for beginning to have auto-updating devices. We need anything that is autonomous, like a printer, to either you know alert people that it needs patching or to just to do it itself in the middle of the night when no one is using it, like our routers should be. What should I do to protect myself? If you own an HP OfficeJet all-in-one printer, then follow the instructions from HP. Uh, they provide a link in their Q&A. I have a link in the show notes. I tweeted it this morning. In addition, you should implement segmentation policies, software patching, and proper IT hygiene. Please see our recommendations section, they say, in the blog post above. If you're no longer actually using the fax functionality in your all-in-one printer, then we recommend you to disconnect the phone line. Uh, perfect advice. You know, yes, just unplug the phone line. Or as you said, Leo, only plug it in when you need to send or you're expecting to receive a fax. That would work too as an interim. And again, non-HP combo, you know, like connected fax devices, uh, hopefully all those companies are working on this too. So do keep a lookout for your non-HP device updates. And in the meantime, you want to, might, may want to take it off the network or disconnect it from the phone rather than just leave it sitting there. Um, and then they ask finally, has it been seen in the wild? They answer, not yet. Our research was intended to highlight a potential security risk. And again, I, this, is, this isn't the sort of thing that I would expect to see you know, you're not going to get a botnet created from it. You're not going. It's not going to be high visibility. It's going to be an attack in the in the dead of night by somebody who develops this, who weaponizes this, and then uses it to get into a company that has whose device is old, doesn't auto update, isn't aware of this. Their IT team, they maybe they don't even have one, or they or you know, they just aren't fixing this, but I, I, I just think this is probably the most significant vulnerability we've seen so far this year. Spectrum meltdown, they were bad. They were theoretical, difficult to do. It's still we not reacted. in the wild, right? I don't and Exactly. Yeah. And no, no practical attack has yet been seen. Uh, this one, boy, I mean, <laughs> I it's I, already in use, <laughs> frankly. Yeah. It, it, there is just, it is too tempting for, and too easy using sta state, you know, like off the shelf standardized tools yeah. for, for bad guys to do this, to follow in the footsteps of Checkpoint, who in their blog post, they, they, I mean, they explained it all. They got screenshots and code and they show what they found. I mean, it's complete documentation of what, of what HP had that was vulnerable in their, uh, in, in their machines. And devices that don't get updated are just going to be sitting there waiting for the phone call. <laughs> wow.